Come on, let's rock and roll with the remote. I don't wanna be buried in a bed, send me to the roof. Hey, this is Marky Ramon here. You're listening to Play That Rock and Roll with Joe K. I don't wanna be buried in a bed, send me to the roof. I don't want to be mad at you. I want you to enjoy every minute of it and keep rocking with Joe. Oh, oh, oh. I don't want to divide now, Tony had not toured since 2003, and he had never done a solo show. But he wanted to tour to promote Out of the Darkness. So, in an effort to ease himself back into touring... He signed up for a couple of package deal tours. First, in 2018, he joined the Retro Futura Tour, which, if you're not familiar, is a, a rotating lineup that tours every year. It's going back a couple of years now, where there's typically two fairly big name 80s artists with uh, a handful of, I guess you'd have to call them one hit wonders, opening for them. Tony joined Retro Futura 2018. The big names were ABC and Belinda Carlisle. And the support acts were Modern English, Tony, Lamal from Kajagogo, and Annabella Lewin from Bow Wow Wow. The four openers only got to play about three or four songs. Um, Tony told CrypticRock.com, I'm only doing four songs, which is a bit strange. By the time I've warmed up, it'll be time to get off. And that was true. I saw this tour. I'll talk about it in a little bit. But the downside of these package tours is that these bands do not get a long time to play. Only the main two acts get to go on for more than a half an hour. Uh, but I got to say, it's a pretty smart way of slowly getting reacclimated to playing live because he hadn't done so in like 15 years. So. I think this was a smart move. Now, the following year, in 2019, he joined John Payne's The Rock Pack. Now, John Payne was the lead singer of Asia in, like, the late 80s and into the 90s, or at some point. He was not their original lead singer. But, in any case, John Payne tours now as Asia featuring John Payne. And he came up with this great idea to basically turn his band into a house band for a couple of others fairly big-name lead singers. Now, I saw the Rock Pack at Wisconsin State Fair a couple of years ago, and the lead singers that played alongside John Payne were Steve on Jerry, who had been with Journey, Fee Waybill from The Tubes, Bobby Kimball from Toto, and Lou Graham from Foreigners. So that was a really strong lineup. Now, since then, Bobby and Fee have left the Rock Pack. So John Payne's 2019 lineup for the Rock Pack would be Lou Graham, Steve Algeri, John, and now Tony. Again, smart move. Tony would get to play a little bit more than he did with Retro Futura, but it still wasn't a full solo show. But this did help him get his name out there. The new album, Success with the Rock Pack and Retro Futura, he was able to book a few solo shows starting in 2019. Now, Tony Lewis's final concert ever was on Royal Caribbean's The 80s Cruise on March 10th, 2020. And the last song he ever played live in front of an audience was obviously the big hit, Your Love. And I saw a video of it, he came out, and he dedicated it to my best friend, John Spinks, and then he played a great crowd-pleasing version of their biggest hit. Now, this was his last song ever in March because uh, COVID-19 shut everything down like that week, and Tony sadly passed away in October 2020. It was totally unexpected. If you look up videos of him doing interviews or performances in 2019 or earlier this year. He looks great. He looks healthy as can be. He's in great spirits. He's very lively. He seems very happy to be back uh, performing live again, and he seems like on the cusp of 
launching a, a fairly respectable late era solo career. It's certainly not unheard of. There's all kinds of classic rock guys who are doing that now. And, you know, I personally, as a fan, was very much looking forward to that. I like the album Out of the Darkness. I really wanted to hear what other stuff Tony could come up with. So like I said earlier, when Tony Lewis passed away, I, I was about as sad as I was when Eddie Van Halen did. Just because I love the outfield that much. I love Tony's voice. I love their songs. It, they're, they're such a strong outfit, and I, it's always bothered me that they've been fairly overlooked and underrated. And I think their reputation might have suffered because they hadn't been able to tour for so long because John was sick. But in any case, Tony was at the point where he was re-entering the touring circuit, and I think it was going to be do good for the band's legacy and for, for Tony's future. But in any case, uh, I guess it wasn't meant to be. So his death was completely unexpected. There's been no official cause um, released. Uh, I'm sure everybody's first uh, worry is that it might have been coronavirus, but if, uh, you know, there's no way to tell until they... Uh, put it out if if they do. The band's always been very private about this kind of stuff, so uh, I didn't dig too deep into it, and it, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, the point is he's he's gone now, and there's nothing left for us fans to do except you know mourn his loss and also make sure we keep his music alive. So uh, there were some remarks from uh, the friends he had made in recent years. The day he passed away, John Payne went on social media and said, From the day I met Tony, we immediately bonded. Not just over music, but we'd be like a couple of kids larking about. We always made each other laugh. He was so down to earth and was the antithesis of high maintenance. The day he died, I tweeted at everybody in the bands he was in, in Retro Futura and the Rock Pack, hoping to get some sort of response. Now, the only guy to respond to my tweets was Lamal who tweeted at me, I shared several dressing rooms with Tony and his lovely wife, Carol. He was a big bungle of fun. We laughed a lot. I have only got good slash fond memories of a great guy slash soul. Neil Sean from Journey tweeted out, We played quite a few shows with the outfield, and they were always excellent. Now, that had reminded me I was fairly certain I had seen videos of Neil's new vocalist, Arnell Pineda, singing your love in his old band on youtube but i I couldn't find any right right away so i tweeted at neil and i asked him if he ever played outfield songs and i suggested that arnell could really nail, nail the vocals because he sings very similar to tony neil did not respond to my tweet but arnell saw it and he tweeted at me and said I used to cover Outfield's Your Love and All the Love back in the 80s and 90s. Great memories. So that was very cool to hear, too. So obviously some nice tributes from uh, Tony's late-era uh, tour mates and also from the lead singer of a big-name touring act now, Arnel Pineda from Journey and Neil Sean from Journey as well, uh, paying their respects, uh, which is very nice. The Outfield and Journey, very similar-sounding bands. I think the outfield definitely took some great inspiration from them, and I'm sure they're aware of that and appreciate that. Now, one interesting thing that is still posted on TonyLewisMusic.com is, Tony has been working on a new EP, which will be released on Madison Records in spring 2021. So, Out of the Darkness may not be the last thing we ever hear from Tony. Sounds like he had some music completed, and hopefully that will see the light of day early next year. And another interesting thing that I read was just like a day or two before he died, he had sent over some backing vocal tracks to John Payne for a song John was putting together as a charity single. I think that's been posted online, so if you're curious about that, uh, check out John Payne's social media page. Now, going back to the Retro Futura tour, I did see that tour in August 28th at the Paps Theater in Milwaukee. This was the only time I ever got to see Tony Lewis or anybody from the outfield 
uh, live in concert. He only played four songs, but he sounded great. Uh, it made me a little resentful that he had to share a ticket. Like he said in his quote, just as he's getting warmed up, he had to get off stage, and that is too bad. I was really hoping for a chance to see him live properly, but he... I think the Rock Pack came to, like, the Wisconsin Dells last year, and I guess I could have made the trip out for that, but I wanted to see a full, proper Tony Lewis solo show, and unfortunately that just wasn't in the cards. But I am very grateful and appreciative that I did get to see him uh, with Retro Futura. He played third that night, I think. Annabella Lewin went first, then Lamal, then Tony, then Modern English, then Belinda Carlisle, and then ABC. I gotta say, it was it was a fun show. It was a great concert, but uh, definitely uh, needed more Tony Lewis because he 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 was definitely the highlight, uh, at least for me. So take me out of the darkness and into the Rockin' with Joe. 